Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gade. Welcome to today. And let me say that slower. Robin Kirby Gatto. Sometimes the clo closed caption on YouTube sp s does it as one word. Kirby Gatto. Kirby Gatto. So welcome to today. It is an awesome Monday, August the 15th. And I pray that today finds you with unexpected surprises. And we're going to start out this broadcast. It's going to super bless you and give you some wisdom to start this week off and get your footing to make sure you have a good attitude. Okay, A good attitude. A good attitude takes you to a higher altitude promotion. Amen. How many of you love <clears throat> being around people that have a good attitude. It just draws you to them. It's like a fire on a cold day. You want to just nestle up under your blanket and get next to the fire and it just gives you warmth and comfort. And that is what Holy Spirit in each of us does of Christ Jesus, the hope of glory. It brings comfort to those in this world. And so they're drawn to you. Amen. Hey, Cheris. Good morning. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And so today, hey Donna, God bless you. God is going to have you just have you just listen to wisdom that I'm giving out of my new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease. And it has been so on my heart. And it started at the beginning of the year with a fast where Holy Spirit began to just prick my heart and bring about repentance of the way that I thought about others and how they mistreated me. You know, that's going to happen in life. You're just going to have, because this is a big world, you're going to have relationships and you're just going to have encounters of where people mistreat you. And I'm going to bring in just breakthroughs and testimonies from the past that God has blessed me so much. And I'm going to bring in a little snippet of my book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease. And it's so amazing because I keep getting just massive, massive confirmation. God bless you, Donna. Love you. Massive confirmation about what God is doing, about what God is doing, about that book. It's so funny because Saturday when we left the gym, I saw... <clears throat> A license plate law girl when we went by Birmingham School of Law they have Saturday school for those students that work during the week and they can't come on the weeknights so they live a little distance from Birmingham thus they attend the Saturday school and I almost did that but I went from Jones School of Law to Concord School of Law online in California and flew out there to take the baby bar at the end of the first year law class and lo and behold I got in the top four to five percent on that baby bar it's like the bar exam it's just your first year law, uh, law school classes and so I really enjoyed having Arthur Miller as my civil procedure Professor, he's celebrity status, and I got to meet him. And he's have had the Harvard chair at the law school for many, many, many years, which is an honorary chair. And I always wanted to go to Harvard Law School when I was 12 years old. I always wanted to marry an Italian man, check, and go to Harvard Law. Well, I didn't go to Harvard Law, but I got my professor, who had an honorary chair at Harvard Law when I was under his uh, under his student teaching when I was being taught by him. So at any rate, I saw a law girl first and then Matthew needed a jump on a vehicle. And so Rich and I got in the car, got my little tech life, which is an awesome little jumper, FYI, especially for you women. It's just a little bitty bar, an energy bar that you plug up and you jump your vehicle off. It's so easy, you can put it in your purse. And so, on our way to jump Matthew off with the uh, car charger, uh, I saw L-A-D-Y-E-S 
Q, which is Lady Esquire. And Esquire is a title for lawyers as well, that when you get your license to practice law, your Esquire, E-S-Q, and so you can put Esquire if you want to. So it was just so funny. And the next day I saw a personalized license plate that is that was Vite, V-I-T-A-E, which means pertaining to life, okay? And I know that already in the first chapter, I bring in contract law and I mention that all through the entire book, I was gonna bring up the elements of contract law and what transpired in the spiritual realm being allocated in the physical realm of this earth, of our body, of our soul, of our spirit, when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, okay? And so it's so funny because in the first chapter I use to assent, mutual assent, that the first element of contract law is mutual assent, where there is an offer and there is an acceptance, there is an agreement. And that's what we're gonna get into today. And I talk about our relationship with God is a familial contract. And those contracts are verified through marriage license, through birth certificate, through power of attorney, through different relationships that you have with family. And so those family relationships are not really for benefits per se, they're for caring for one another and carrying out duties for another person in the family. Okay, and the relationship we have to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a firm contract relationship. And I bring that in by talking about law firms and firms and that the root word for tree means firm. And even the word for tree in Hebrew means firm, okay? And you don't realize how you have a contractual agreement in the invisible realm of the spirit, physics, for those of y'all who are out there that know science pretty well, in the supernatural, it's also in physics. I'm gonna stand by this tree as a matter of fact. And so, we're in agreements, but thanks be to God in Christ Jesus, hey Kim, that God's familial family contract with us when we're born again and we're now born from above our spirit, we're now adopted. That family contract usurps and makes void <clears throat> the contract that the enemy has over our soul. And so we Philippians 2 12 work on our salvation in fear and in trembling. Okay. Well, watch this because the book is mainly, believe it or not, about life, the Zoe, and life abundantly, what Jesus came to bring, eternal Zoe, eternal life. And so it's a life that's from heaven. It's not a life of this present age. And so each of us, as we come to salvation, have this eternal life that sustains us in our person. And so God has shown me where the enemy of Jesus's abundant life is the pride of life. And so what is pride of life? It means <clears throat> I know how to run things and I know what other people should do <clears throat> and I know what they're not doing that they should do. Oh my, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Have you ever been guilty? Hello, I've been guilty. You know, when you look at a person and you judge them and you think they should do this, they should do that, they shouldn't be doing this, they shouldn't be doing that. And oh my goodness, good morning, friend. It is just the pride of life, shooting on other people. They should, they shouldn't be. If they would, if they wouldn't, oh my. That is us thinking that we know how people should live and how we should live as it relates to our own life and how it is to unfold. Listen, if you can figure it out, 
it isn't going to happen that way. What do I mean? I don't mean that if you're a doctor that you don't know that you're going to medical school, of course, and that you're going to eventually be a doctor, of course. But it still means that you put everything into God's hands and you let him bring about the locations and all of that, okay? And so there's so many times that we have this plan and it's really a backup plan. Okay, we're gonna address two things, judging others and us doing things in our own strength. That's the pride of life. And when you have those two operative in your person, you're not gonna walk and you're not gonna go into the abundant life where the blessings of God overtake you where the blessings of God ever take you. Look at that dog, he has three legs and he doesn't know it. He's living life, he's not complaining. He's not going around going, I only have three legs, I only have three legs. But we do that, don't we? I, only, I don't have enough money, I don't have a degree, I don't have the connections, I don't, I don't. I don't, I don't, what, have. And I actually get into that in Mindfulness, Mount of Christ, chapter nine about be, have. You be what you have. So if you think you don't have, guess what? You be that. And you have to behave. I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do that. I should do this, I should do that. You have to behave because you look at what you don't have. But, if you look at what God's blessed you with and what you have from God, not of this earth, not possessions, not things, not titles, but you look at what God has given you, first and foremost, eternal salvation in Christ Jesus, amen. And you look at that he's blessed you and you have that. You don't should on yourself or would and should on others, okay? And that's the pride of life. And so let me just show you these two things. Oh, I'm telling you, you know, it's easy to catch ourselves when we're doing it, when others haven't done anything to us. Okay. Oh Lord, forgive me for judging them. Forgive me, God. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you're just keeping my mouth closed and you're keeping my heart in check so that my heart stays right and I don't judge others. Okay, that's easy. But oh my, <laughs> when it comes to others mistreating us, the pride of life says we have a license to say whatever we wanna say. And I don't mean getting counsel, okay? And getting wisdom from others about your circumstances. So don't take it that way. I'm talking about when we feel like we have that invisible license and it says you can say how they mistreated you. You can say this, you can say that. That person was impatient. See, that's the pride of life because I had the right of way and the pride of life says, you don't matter, you're in my way, get out of my way. And they drive real fast because they're of this world and schedule, schedule, schedule. Hurry, 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 hurry. Everybody hurry, get out of my way. Hurry everybody, get out of my way. Oh, we don't do that, do we? Oh, let's confess our sins. Yes, we do. So we can be, for morning, forgiven, okay? And so the pride of life says, oh, this person did that to me. This, these people did that to me. They're doing this to me. And let me tell you, please do not think that I am perfect, okay? I am as imperfect as all of you <laughs> trying to get through this life to live the Christ kind of life, okay? The character of Christ. And let me tell you, I do have those issues. And it is a battle sometimes because the pride of life in my members wants to... <laughs> Man, these people are treating me wrong. They're doing this because of either past trauma or either rejection, which we're accepted in the beloved. We're not accepted in people, amen. And so it is really a struggle. Well, 
I'm going to bring back my fast at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of the year, when Holy Spirit was having me pray about a situation, and he said, Robin, every time you're thinking about what others have done to you, you know what? You're in agreement with the accuser of the brethren. You're in agreement with the accuser of the brethren. And I would, he would just wake me up through the night as things would go through my head and all these crazy thoughts through the day and they would torment me and God would say, break agreement with the accuser. Amen, share, amen, friend. Break agreement with the accuser. And I would say, God, I just break agreement with the accuser of the brethren in Jesus' name. And I did it all week. And God would show me all through the day how my heart was lined up with the accuser of the brethren. And you say, oh, Robin, no. Uh, let's look at Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah 6. When the glory visits, you're not saying, oh, yeah. You're saying, woe is me first. And this is what a lot of people don't understand about the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. Is that when you get that baptism at first, it is a purifying fire. And so there is massive weeping and repentance, falling on the ground. And then the joy comes after the cleansing and the, and the joy, unspeakable and full of glory. And you're just in such joy of the Lord and you're strengthened by that. Well, God just showed me like Isaiah 6 where the prophet says, Oh, woe is me, good morning, Liz, for I am a man of unclean lips. See, when the glory comes, you realize your self-righteousness, and that's the pride of life. And that self-righteousness says, this person isn't doing that. This, that person isn't doing this. They don't have this. They haven't done this. So they deserve that. Oh, saints, let us be slow to speak. Let us be quick to listen to the heart of the Father and what the Father is saying, amen? And so the pride of life says that we are not gonna extend forgiveness to other people and we judge them for what they've done. Whereas love covers a multitude of sins. When you do that, guess what? Your prayers are effective and they avail tremendous power. And so that's number one. And I want to give you the testimony that I've used in Mindfulness Mount of Christ when I was going through persecution and people were really mistreating me and doing all kinds of evil against my person at a church. And God said, just believe the best and pretend they're not doing it. And I was thinking, God, where is that in scripture? You know, pretend they're not doing it. And then that's when he said, First Corinthians 13, 7 says, love deletes the best. And I would just pretend they weren't doing it. And I just kept saying to myself, they love me. They just don't know it yet. And when I would be around them and they would be coming against me to shame me publicly at this church, it was like this bubble. I was encapsulated in this bubble and when they spoke anything or came near my person, it was though that bubble was filled with liquid love. And when they would do anything, it's like they pushed this bubble is the only way I can describe it. And this, it was like this wave of love just overtook my person. Okay. And I would just laugh. I would just, whoo, I felt amazing. <laughs> because nothing can pierce that rest of God, that love of God, that love covers you. That love is a shield. And so I want to bring that to your attention today to don't would, could, should on others, period. And especially those who've hurt you, break agreement with the accuser. Know that you're in the pride of life and also break agreement with the accuser over yourself. And just say, I break agreement with the accuser over me in Jesus' name. Because when you're feeling that condemnation, Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And it's in that life, that Zoe, that eternal life. 
and said, when you're operating in the pride of life, you're taking yourself out of the hand of God's protection and you're open and susceptible for attacks of the enemy. So this week, start out right and also don't complain. I wrote a note on it yesterday. Man, I kid you not. From 2002 to 2005, my spiritual discernment was like on steroids. And I could see and hear things and smell so amazingly. <laughs> and when people would complain, I would see literally this yellow stench come out of their mouth. And it was like mustard gas. That's the only way to describe it, like mustard gas. And it was, it was a colored mustard. It was yellow colored mustard. And it was like mustard gas. And it would come out of their mouths every time they would complain. And I still have trouble being around this today because it just, whew, my members can't be around it because misery loves company and it wants to get misery in you. And so I would get up and run out of rooms out of Sunday school classes, out of gatherings with people, with friends and all, I would just get up and run out or either I'd be on the phone and if someone was complaining on the phone, no matter who it was, I would say, I gotta go, I gotta go. Cause I could not be around that complaining. So saints, watch your tongue and let life flow out of your tongue in Jesus name. God bless you, I love you.